An old video, apparently broadcasted by CNN, gives some insight into what's believed to be an ancient calculator of sorts, as they call it. This video is interesting because rarely do we see popular media outlets highlighting sophisticated aspects of African culture or society. So today, I thought I would review their input into this history and share with the diaspora. <laughs> By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. Also, your support helps the channel grow, improving production quality and future animated projects. And so, if you're interested, the link to Patreon is in the description box below. To begin, some of you may have already seen this video as it's been dispersed numerous times, so hopefully you'll stick around for the review. Also, this video is not a celebration of popular culture's validation of African history or culture. The only intent is to analyze this perspective. That being said, let's play some clips of the video. Well, Africa being credited with another contribution to science. CNN's Patricia Kelly talked with researchers who have evidence that 20,000 years ago, before the pharaohs of Egypt, another African civilization produced a sophisticated calculator best described as a prehistoric calculator it's a piece of animal bone just 10 centimeters long about four inches discovered in the 1950s by a leading belgian archaeologist the bone was found near lake edward at ishango on the border between the congo and rwanda what sets the bone apart from the other fossils and fragments found at ishango are its markings groups of notches arranged in three distinct columns they are very, very well organized. They are not made at random. If, the, if you, you can make notches at random just to count how many animals you have uh, killed today or something like that, but it's rather well organized. When the notches are counted, a series of number sequences emerges. They suggest a number system based on 10, another based on 12, as well as a knowledge of multiplication and of prime numbers. This is a replica of the bone. It's thought this piece of quartz at the tip may have been used for writing or engraving. We have more and more proofs of mathematical activities in Africa, not written, but on stones, on bones, on strings. So indeed, there are more reasons to think that it's the start of, it's the very first mathematical activity. And to my, and well, in my view, of course, it's even, it should not be on the 19th floor, it should be on a golden table at the entrance of the museum. It's thought Ishango Man's numbers system may have spread north following the River Nile into Egypt as well as into West Africa. This popular media outlet seems to be advancing the idea that the Ishango bone is indeed some kind of sophisticated mathematical device. They use specific language mentioning that it was before the pharaohs denoting its uniqueness and antiquity. The bone was discovered in 1960 by a Belgian geologist and explorer right in the heart of Africa, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. One column of marks on the bone begins with three notches that double to six notches, four notches double to eight, ten notches half to five. This may suggest a simple understanding of doubling or halving. Even more striking is the fact that numbers in other columns are all odd. One column contains the prime numbers between 10 and 20, and the numbers in each column sum to 60 or 48, both multiples of 12. Most sources claim that the Ashango bone is one of the oldest mathematical tools on the planet. One source dates the bone to around 8500 BC. It was originally considered to be a simple tally stick, but upon further observation and analysis, a different opinion arose, leading some to conclude that it may have been a lunar calendar. Although quite speculative, some have hypothesized that the markings on the Ashango bone form a kind of lunar calendar for a Stone Age woman who kept track of her menstrual cycles giving rise to the slogan, menstruation created mathematics. Even if the Ashango was a simple bookkeeping device, 
These tallies seem to set us apart from the animals and represent the first steps to symbolic mathematics. The full mystery of the Ashango bone can't be solved until other similar bones are discovered. Although some scholars remain skeptical as to what the Ashango bone actually is, the general consensus seems to accept the idea that the bone is some sort of mathematical device, one of the first in human history. What I found very interesting in CNN's broadcast was that they mentioned the writing or etching tool at the end of the bone, which was perhaps used to carve other symbols or simply make more notches on other objects. Also in the broadcast, the mathematician Dirk Huyelbrook seems a little baffled that the Ashango bone is not the premier item in the museum, displayed front and center for the world to see. It's hard to not agree with him there. But the most telling theory discussed on the broadcast, and perhaps the most striking, was the idea that the number system of the Ashango bone may have flowed down the Nile, contributing to Egyptian civilization, one of the principal civilizations of mankind. Now admittedly, I would have never imagined a day when a popular media outlet would speak on such an important object of Africa, let alone allude to such influence. Anyway guys, the reason I showed this broadcast was because I thought it would be interesting for the diaspora to see. Even though it's an old video, this original perspective on the Ashango bone is worthy of note. We'll see what the future holds concerning the status of the Ashango bone in popular culture, but for now, at least we have a record of the train of thought. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to contribute to its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.